Today we're going to explore comic book covers. Comic book covers are an amazing illustration style that started around 1933 with this famous comic book right here. Famous Funnies was the first American comic book that looks like what we would recognize today as a comic book. The first action hero one was Action Comics in 1938 with Superman. He was the very first and is still popular today. This is when things start to get formalized in the illustration style for comic book covers so that they would be uniform in certain ways. That way when you were going into a store you knew you were buying, instead of a book, a comic book. So there are certain things that are starting to appear in this that are going to be happening in every illustration after that. We're going to move ahead to modern times and the most popular selling one is Spider-Man. The Spider-Man series has been around since the 1960s, started by Stan Lee, and just grew and grew in popularity. Here, this cover shows all of the main hallmarks that we're looking for in a comic book cover. Do you know what those elements are? Let's look at another one. Again, Superman, but now more modern, certainly not 1938. Again, it has all the main characteristics or hallmarks of a comic book cover. See if you can see what those are. Here again is another one, Wonder Woman. We're going to put Superman and Wonder Woman side by side and see if you can notice what is similar and maybe what is different about these two. What makes them comic book covers? What do they both include? Even though the images are very different, there are certain things about the illustration cover that let us know that it is a comic book cover. I'm going to pull out just Superman and we're going to talk about that one and see if we can figure out what those parts are. What is it that every comic book cover has? The first thing should be obvious and that's the title. The title is big and bold and is always on the top part of the book. Comic books are stored in shelves upwards, so comic book covers are always vertical. You're never going to see a horizontal comic book cover. The reason for this is that one can be placed in front of another and you can still see the title up top. So it's in order to help sell the book. And many of these things are about selling the book. Illustration is a job that's used by an artist to help sell a product. And in this case, comic book covers. The next thing that we're going to see on there is a subtitle. The subtitle tells you what's going to happen inside the book. If you're grabbed by the title or you collect Superman, then you're going to look at the subtitle to see, is that the edition that you want to buy? Do you want to read more about it? So the subtitle becomes important. Movie posters will include a title, but they won't always include a subtitle. Most comic book covers do. So that's what kind of sets them apart. The next thing that's going to happen in this is you're going to see a main action. There's going to be something exciting sort of happening on the cover of the comic book. This is, again, not always true in movie posters, but it's certainly going to be in comic book covers because they want you to buy that book. So it's not going to be Superman sitting on a fence chewing on a piece of straw. It's going to be something happening, and certainly something is happening here with Superman and that monster. The third thing, or the fourth thing actually, that we might miss is the logo, and that tells us the company that made it. The company can give you an indication of the quality of the work. So you have DC Comics and Marvel Comics, which are well established, and we know that their quality tends to be very high. But if you got a comic by Malibu Comics or Joe's Comics, you might not know, well, how is the quality of their work? Some people will only collect DC Comics, some only Marvel, and then some will collect only the rare ones by companies that other people don't really know about, hoping that maybe they've made an investment. If you remember back to that Action Comics book, the first Superman edition, the first uh, Action Comic book, if you had one of those today in your attic, it would be worth well over $3 million. So some people collect them just as an investment. So we have our elements of a comic book cover, but now we need to think about how do we organize those elements. That's when you're going to start to use your art elements and your art principles. In this, we need to have our foreground, middle ground, background. Those are really important to set up this sense of space. Here we have Superman is in the foreground because his cape is even being overlapped by the logo and the title. So he's right up front. If you think of 
a picture or an artwork as a window, you should be able to reach through the window and touch a foreground element, or maybe even a foreground element is popping through that window. So that's how you know it's foreground. Middle ground, you would have to step through that window a little bit and walk to that middle ground element. It might just be a couple of steps. And in this case, it's the monster that's right behind Superman. So that is your middle ground element. The last thing is the background. That gives us the sense of space and place, how far away things are. So in this, the background is shown by the silhouette of a palm tree and there's some clouds in the very back background. That gives us that sense of depth. So by having foreground, middle ground, and background, we get this idea that this is taking place in a whole other space. It gives us this sense of richness, like there's a lot gonna be happening in there. But how do we cram all of those things in together? There's another trick that illustrators use, and that's called overlap. It's really important that we overlap our things in the image so it can become very rich. If you have Superman here and the monster here, and they're not overlapping each other, it's not gonna be as exciting as one in front of the other. So illustrators do this overlapping and layering to get this sense of space in their images. It makes it far more exciting and you're more apt to buy it. So if we're gonna be making our own comic book covers, there's many different directions that you can go in. I created this little drawing that I use, and actually I redraw it almost every year, but it's got the four main things that we're looking for, our title, our logo, our main action, and our subtitle. And I've even overlapped things the way that we talked about before. We have our foreground, middle ground, oops, middle ground, and our background. The stars also act as partially the background. And then we have overlap. The title is overlapping the ship. The ship tail is overlapping the earth. The little creature down here is overlapping the moon. This gives us that sense of space. A lot of times, uh, comic book covers start out as linear drawings, and then you would go ahead and color in with either color pencils, markers, crayons, whatever it is you like. If the paper is thick enough, you might even be able to use watercolors. So what kind of comic book cover could you create? Well, there are things called parody, which means to make fun of something, giving it a little bit of a twist. And instead of regular Harry Potter, how about Harry Potter story? So we've got a Potter who is Harry, and we have our foreground, middle ground, and background suggested in the image. The logo is Dust Bunny Comics, so it's just kind of silly. With all that hair, there's probably some dust bunnies on the floor. And then we would go ahead and color this in. So parody, making fun of something, changing the title a little bit, can give you a lot of ideas for really fun comic book covers. You could also do something which is called a mashup, putting two characters together that just don't belong. If you took a scary monster like Alien and put them together with Elmo and had them fight it out, you would have a really interesting comic book cover that maybe somebody would like to read someday. Or what about taking an original character that you've been developing over the years? If you like that Japanese animation style, maybe this is the time for you to shine. Or maybe make yourself a character. What would be the superpower you would like to have? Or maybe you'll be a supervillain and then draw a comic book cover of that. I'll show you a few more student examples and some ones that I've used in my classroom. Maybe they'll give you some ideas. Remember, make up your own. Don't copy what I've already done for you. Instead of Ren and Stimpy, the uh, popular comic from the 90s, this is Hen and Stumpy. So it's an unusual chicken and his best friend is a tree stump. Again, we have foreground, middle ground, background, and overlap. And it's called Dumb Comics. That's the logo. It's kind of silly, but it's fun. And then we have our subtitle, Together Again. As if something interesting the last, happened the last time with a tree stump and a chicken. It's just kind of silly. Here's another one by a student called the Evil Desk. They were kind of bewildered about what kind of creature to create, and I suggested, well, just look around you and turn something like that into a comic book cover. So they made the Evil Desk, and it's back for another year as our subtitle. We have our foreground, middle ground, background, and overlap, and it's a very successful comic book cover. Here's one, Revenge of the Retainers. So, they used a bubble in the foreground to kind of give us the sense of what's going on inside the building. Their title is big and bold, and they were very creative with the coloring of that. And then we have lots of little subtitles going on telling us about what's gonna happen inside this book. 
You've heard of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles before. Well, this is Teenage Mutant Varsity Cheerleaders. So this student did the, um, the comic book cover, uh, making a parody of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then had some real fun with that. Eraser versus pencil. He can only be number two because number two pencils are number two. So it's just sort of a silly way of taking a joke and then illustrating it as a comic book cover. Even the, the logo is stationary comics because erasers and pencils are just kinds of stationary. Our last example is fun. It's called Killer Hand Turkeys from Outer Space. You can see that the title has paid a lot of attention to texture. Um, we got the hand turkey colors, killer is kind of bloody looking, uh, outer space looks spacey with sort of a comet sort of happening in there, and then we have our foreground, middle ground, background, and overlap. This was done on thicker paper and is a watercolor image uh, that was first done in pen. So think about some ideas, write them down, give it a little bit of a sketch before you start on your final paper. These are uh, 12 by 18 inches, but you could use any size that you like. So think about a comic book illustration, see if you can include all of the major uh, parts that make it a comic book cover, and have some fun with this lesson.